Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Andy Clements and welcome to the Muscle Building Mastery Podcast. In this uh, episode, I want to talk to you a little bit about the two different ways to respond to failure, uh, because failure is going to come to us all at one moment in time or another when it comes to our muscle building goals, and how you can leverage one particular type of way of responding to failure to your advantage to make sure that um, next time you uh, come across a stumbling block, you make sure you push through it and uh, keep progressing, okay? So I'll tell you a little story about um, how I dealt with failure one time in the past when I was first starting out, okay? And this is different because I always used to um, use the opposite approach. There's two different types of failure. And what I would normally do um, in the past um, when I was presented with a stumbling block um, whether it was with building muscle, whether it was with dieting, whether it was with um, anything really, right? I always had the approach that if I couldn't do it the first time, I couldn't do it, right? So I used to I used to give up on a lot of stuff. Uh, that's a lot of academic stuff, a lot of school stuff, um, um, a lot of sporting stuff. I was big into football, and you might know if you watched episode one of the podcast, um, then you will have, you will have heard um, how uh, big I was into football. And I used to give up on a lot of that kind of stuff. And um, I remember when I was, when, when I first, when I was maybe hmm, 19, 20 years old, the first time I really did a serious diet and I really seriously said to myself, right, I'm going to do what it takes to get in shape and um, I'm going to lose the fat I've got, I'm going to build some muscle, I'm going to build some strength and I'm going to try and really, you know, transform my physique a little bit. I remember the first time uh, I tried to do that, I did it with the, uh, the my partner at the time, my girlfriend at the time, and um, we both were kind of like, okay, we're going to get in shape, we're going to do this diet. We did a really strict diet and we followed it to the letter. We got to like, so we followed this like online thing. We did it to the letter and we were losing weight every week and uh, we were getting, uh, you know, in shape every week. I was building muscle. I was, I was cutting the fat down. I was starting to see my abs and we probably did it for five or six weeks by this point. And, um, at like I was out of the week six or week seven. We used to do like a, a weigh in every morning. Uh, sorry, every week, once a week, we'd, we'd weigh ourselves. We'd get the scales, make a whole big show of it right it was a bit weird but we used to we used to make a whole big show of weighing ourselves on this specific day at a specific time before we'd eaten and um every single week i was losing weight i was losing weight like one pound a week two pounds a week three pounds a week i was losing weight i was losing weight, was losing weight. and that was the goal right because i wanted to lose the fat before i built the muscle i was like strip the fat down then build the muscle and i was building muscle at the same time but overall i was bringing my weight down and there was one particular week where after losing weight every single week i weighed myself and i was exactly the same weight as seven days before and I was like, oh, shit. Like, and I, I'd been working hard, you know. I'd been doing my cardio. I'd been doing my... Uh, I'd not had one single solitary thing that was off plan. I'd been really, really strict with my diet. I'd been weight training. I'd been doing the... Sh- the, the I've had my protein drink after my workout. I've been doing all that stuff. And I was like, what, what, what's going on? Like, wh- why, why have I not lost weight? And I was so frustrated. So frustrated. I can remember sort of looking like 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 you doing that thing where you're like you'll step off the scales, you'll wait for them to sort of reset, and then you step on the scales again, then you do it again and again and again, and and just like every single time it came out like the same way, the same way, the same. And I was like, man, the, these scales are definitely not broken, right? This is this is giving me the same weight. This is the same set of scales, and all the variables were the same. The same set of scales on the same tile of the kitchen floor, and um, at the same time of day before I'd eaten, you know, there was no excuse whatsoever. So I was like my instinct kicked in straight away. I was like, this is, this is dumb. I'm, I'm not going to do this. I don't want to have this feeling. I don't have this pain anymore. I don't want to um, uh, feel like I'm failing at anything. If I do something, I want to achieve it. Right. And um, I wasn't achieving it. So I was faced with two choices. And my instinct was go to choice number one, which was um, get pissed off, throw the towel in and eat a bunch of ice cream and a bunch of um, crappy food and say, well, you know, I did five weeks, I did six weeks, and that's that's as, that's as good as I'm going to get, right? That was choice number one, and that was the choice that historically, from always being a kid, I would have I would have just instinctively followed. I wouldn't even thought about it. I'd just been like, okay, that's what I'm doing, um, and um, I very nearly did that. But then I sat and I thought about it for a minute, and I was like. I put a lot of effort into this and I made myself a promise when I started this. I was like, I'm going to get in shape no matter what it takes. And so I thought about it and I was like, what's behind choice number two? What's behind door number two, right? Um, and I thought I thought about it. Okay, so I was, I was like, I've got the choice. I've got to do what I normally do and I could throw in the towel. Or behind door number two, I could make absolutely sure that for the rest of this diet, 
I do not stagnate again. And um, I put everything I've got into pushing through and achieving this goal. And I'm gonna use this as motivation and, and, and work a little bit harder, all right? And um, accept that, you know, sometimes you, you're gonna have the odd week where even if you were doing everything right, things are just gonna not quite go to plan, right? Uh, and the results can't, I, I'm gonna quite go as you expected, but have that long-term mindset. So I thought to myself, I thought, well, just for a change, I'm gonna try choice number two. I'm gonna try and push through and push harder. And I can remember really vividly, I um, I was like, uh, the, the cardio I was doing at the time, the cardio wasn't hard, right? I was just doing two 20 minute walks a day. And, and obviously, and that must have been more than I was doing before because the weight was falling off me until I got to that point where I stagnated. And I was like, right, you know what? I'm, 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 I don't think I actually made my walk, my walks that much longer, but I, I was like ferocious pace, right? Because before it was just like a steady plod. I was just walking along and my headphones in this, my music, blah, blah, blah. And, um, not, not, and you know, I got to a point where you hit a wall and I was like, right, I'm on it, right? Okay, so I, I can remember I was like, like working really, really hard at my cardio. I was working really like, even harder in the gym. I, I, I don't think I adjusted my diet, but I made sure everything was on point. I was measuring things to the gram and everything. I was like really, really on it, and I, I worked so, so much harder. I used that stagnating, like pissed off feeling. I was like, that's really annoyed me that I've not lost the the weight that I wanted to lose from that week, and instead of um, being reactive to that and, and instinctively going and, and sabotaging my whole goals, I used it as motivation to push harder the next week. And when I got on them scales the next week, I'd lost like another two pounds or another three pounds. I can't remember the exact numbers, but I was like, yes, I can remember that feeling of like, yes, right. I, um, it paid off. And, and for the rest of the diet, for the rest of the 12, 13, 14 weeks, however long, however long it was, I consistently lost weight and I got into the best shape of my life. And, um, that was about 40 pounds ago, <laughs> about 40 um, pounds, because I, I, since then, you know, I've brought my weight up and I've, I've learned how to build strength and build muscle and all the rest of it. But it all started by stripping the fat down and that pivotal point, that pivotal point where I could have gone one way or the other. Like, like when I look back on it now, I realise that if I'd, if I'd have gone behind the different choice, being where choice number one and throwing the towel, I probably wouldn't have ever had the career I've had. I wouldn't have ever built the muscle and the strength that I had because I, w I would never have realized my like that I was capable of it because I would have just given in. So if you're in a similar position right now to where I was and that and little, little bit of story resonates with you in any way whatsoever and you think like, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to do it, whether it's a diet, whether it's you, you, you're trying to build strength, you're trying to put... Uh, some uh, weight on your bench press or your deadlift or even your bicep curl, I don't know, whatever it is, and it's just stagnating. Rather than jacking it in and thinking, well, this isn't for me, you know, maybe I need, I know, maybe it's only for people who take drugs, maybe it's only for people who are genetically gifted, maybe it's only for people who have time, maybe it's only for people who work in a gym, or whatever story you're telling yourself about why you can't achieve it, what if you just change that story and what if you change the decision you made and the choice you made on the back of it and said, okay, I made the assumption that I am definitely capable of this. What do I need to do to achieve it? When you start asking that question, that's a better question, right? Rather than why have why can't I achieve it? That's a, that's a, not a good question. What do I have to do to achieve it? That's a better question. That gets you thinking, okay, what do I have to do to actually achieve this? What do I have to do to make this happen? And then you realise if it's a strength goal or a muscle building goal, then it's like, mm, okay, what do I have to do to achieve this? Maybe it's not just about what I, what I put on the bar in the gym. Maybe I need to look after my sleep a bit better. Maybe I need to get a bit more tight, tighten the, the, the diet up a little bit, you know, and, and maybe I need to look into salt in my food and maybe I need to look into the role of potassium before, you know, and maybe I need to look into my stress management and maybe I need to look at the time I'm training. And then all these whole masses of different factors that could be, um, affecting your uh, ability to lift that bar in the gym or whatever the goal is, right? So, it, that 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 sometimes sometimes it just needs a bit more, a, a bit uh, sort of harder work, and you need to use that uh, feeling as motivation. And sometimes you just need to ask yourself, what do I need to do to get past this sticking point? You know, because when you first start a goal, you, it's quite easy to get momentum. You're like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I've gone from doing absolutely nothing to eating well and training and I'm building muscle and losing fat, brilliant. Then there comes a point, five, six, seven weeks in, whenever it is, 
that that stops working and that's the critical point. You have the choice one, throw in the towel, the choice two is what do I do to get past this sticking point and then you go and do it. You use that pissed off feeling that you feel now as motivation and you push on through it and um, you will 100% if you use that as motivation and you push through and you figure out what you have to do to achieve that, whether you have to go and learn, whether you have to go and buy something online, whether you have to go and uh, pay someone for their advice, whether you have to just watch YouTube videos or podcasts like this for free, whatever you have to do, go do it. If you want it bad enough, you'll go learn how to do it and you'll do it. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so um, yeah, I hope that made sense. Um, that's the main takeaway. Learn how to do it and then do it. Um, and don't give in to that pissed off feeling. Don't give in to that feeling of frustration that you don't think you can do it because you've come across a sticking point. Um, so I hope that made sense. Hope you um, enjoyed that. If you did, um, give me a thumbs up. Give me a little bit of a rating on YouTube or a rating on iTunes or Spotify or whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. And um, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe, follow this podcast and all the rest of the stuff. So I hope you, I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in the next episode of Muscle Building Mastery Podcast.